First now to Executive Director of Carnegie Mellon, uh, Professor Emil Bolongata, and um, it's wonderful to have you in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, Ian. Thank now, you. Now, now, tell me about the Carnegie Mellon University. Where is it? Uh, is it in Adelaide? Yes, it is. W- where is it? We're in the Torrance Building uh, uh, in Victoria Square, uh, right. right beside the State Administration Centre Building. Okay. And how many students do you have? Uh, currently, we have over 150 uh, students. Uh, enrolled and it's an expensive course is it or what I I understood that it's uh, like it's a a postgraduate university we we offer two postgraduate uh, programs uh, Ian uh, one in public policy and management and the other in information systems uh, and information technology right now this was brought here under an agreement with the former premier wasn't it Mike Rand yes yes so, so, so what happened to that agreement? Did you have a, a joint venture or what was the original arrangement? Uh, the, the, uh, the state government provided uh, support to, to Carnegie Mellon to establish itself in Adelaide for the first five years. And uh, that form of support uh, included uh, scholarships uh, for Australians to study in, in the program. Uh, that support ended uh, effectively two years ago. And uh, we're currently uh, uh, on our own. Right. Uh, we're... Uh, and have you been with it since the beginning? No, I, I jo- well, I was in the beginning, but not as executive director. Right. So how do you cope with no government support for a university based in a very expensive part of town? I mean, the Torrens building, do you get any assistance with the rent or is it you have to pay commercial rates? We pay commercial rates. Uh, we're we're uh, on our own. Uh, we are a uh, essentially a tuition-funded uh, university. We don't get any support from our uh, parent university in terms of uh, in terms of our budget uh, since two years ago. Right. So you're literally on your own, and yet you're able to still offer scholarships. I understand. Yes, uh, we're we're actually quite delighted that uh, we're able to to offer the Downer and Rand scholarships in honor of these two gentlemen who who uh, brought the university here. Yes, uh, they they had an inspired uh, uh, thought about uh, internationalizing further the uh, uh, South Australian education sector. And it's interesting, both of them ended up being um, High Commissioner in London, so the Downer Rand Scholarship has got quite a ring to it, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, and it's worth quite a bit of money. So what's a Downer Rand Scholarship worth? Uh, it's worth up to $65,000 uh, for a postgraduate degree in, uh, in our Masters of Science in Public Policy and Management. And that effectively is a 75% uh, scholarship. Gosh. So, so if you paid the full tote odds for that, you're talking about the, the what's that, ninety thousand dollars? No, about uh, seventy to to eighty thousand. About eighty thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, quite quite remarkable. And you've got four of these yes. available for South Australians or all of Australia? For Australians and, and Australian uh, permanent residents. Mm. And so I mean that's I mean that's like like a road scholarship or something, isn't it? I mean you, you're getting a uh, ex- extraordinary amount of money for there for that. $65,000. So how does someone who is sitting out there listening to this and saying, look, I've been through my university, I've got my undergraduate degree, I'd like to go to Carnegie Mellon and really have something that that will give me an edge in the world. Yes. How do they apply and what do they need as a prerequisite? Well, they uh, go through our normal uh, application process that includes uh, taking a, uh, a GRE or a GMAT test. These are international aptitude tests, and they need to have above average uh, uh, scores in their, in their undergraduate degrees, and they need to submit a, uh, two sets of essays. One essay will be particularly focused on why they are uh, deserving of the Downer and Ran uh, Scholarship. Mm. Okay. Uh, both scholarships are focused on on the interests of of the two gentlemen for on the part of of the downer uh, of alexander downer he 's particularly interested in individuals who are uh, going to pursue or boost their careers in international affairs and uh, and international development uh, Mr. Rann is very keen on social justice and environment uh, uh, issues, individuals who would like to make a difference in, the, in those areas. Okay, so I mean, I'm only just thinking about this because I had him on the program this morning, but Jeff Thompson, who's the ABC Four Corners reporter, for example, he's doing a program tonight called Beyond Coal, and he was uh-huh. also one of our brightest young um, journalists in the ABC, and I know he's got a, an undergraduate degree as well. He could, he could submit what were the world like beyond coal, and then and, and, and apply for this, and he might get a down around $65,000 scholarship. That's that, the type of person, is it? That would be fantastic, Ian. Mm. Uh, we would be delighted to get uh, uh, that kind of uh, individual. The idea is to get the best and the brightest. Yeah. 
And looking at those sort of things, like what would the world be like beyond coal? I mean, this public policy and management. In other words, looking into the future. It's yes. Futurist. Yeah. Yes. Uh, essentially, this will be for uh, individuals who seek to uh, establish uh, leadership roles in, in their respective areas. And uh, Carnegie, just tell us about that. The, the Carnegie Foundation, th- that's the American industrialist, the original person who yes. started the university. Yes. Yeah. He came from Scotland, I think, originally. Yes, oh, he yeah. did. He did. He, he established uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in, in the 1900s. And uh, the, uh, the university has, uh, has grown considerably. And uh, the campus here in Adelaide uh, is part of a global network of campuses that include campuses in Qatar and Rwanda. And Rwanda? Yes. So uh, the Rwandan campus is the uh, African campus and, and Adelaide is the Asia-Pacific campus of, of Carnegie Mellon. And uh, we are, and of course, the, the Dubai, uh, the Qatar campus is our campus in, in the Middle East. Oh. So focused on the, on the markets uh, in, in those respective continents and regions. So, so it, it's, a, it's a remarkable institution then because you've chosen in particular to establish these universities in places you wouldn't necessarily expect. I mean, Adelaide's not the first place that comes to mind yes. in Asia. And yes. Rwanda's not the first place that comes to mind in Africa. So, yes. so who is the, the grand overseer of Carnegie Mellon who makes these decisions? Is there a board somewhere in America that looks at all this? Well, we, we had a, a very internationally oriented uh, president, uh, President Jared Cohen, who's now been replaced by an equally internationalist president, uh, President Subra Suresh. The idea really is to make uh, the university a, a, a global uh, a university that can offer students uh, a rich experiential learning all over the world. Now, one of our listeners is saying uh, they would like to know, Professor Emil Bolongata, what your accent is. They're wondering where you're from. I'm, I'm originally from the Philippines. Are you? Right. Yes. That's a, it's a, and and did you, were you a graduate of Carnegie Mellon yourself or not? No, I'm not. I'm a graduate of a U.S. university, however, and uh, and I think that's probably where my accent got formed in, in the Midwest, no, in the it's, U.S. It's a beautiful accent, and it's a Spanish name as well, is it? The, uh, yes. Bolong, Bolong, Bolongata. Yes, yeah. or more specifically, a uh, Catalan last name. Uh, Catalan, oh. Yes. Right. Now, we have a professor here that's a regular on the morning program, uh, Gillard Zuckerman, and Gillard is doing what they call massive online courses now. They're called MOOCs. I yes. mean, is it, is it possible that if someone said, look, I can't afford the $80,000 to do a Carnegie Mellon course in science and public policy management, could they do anything online? Are there any online courses that are cheaper? Uh, there are, but uh, our program is uh, a face-to-face uh, uh, on-site physical presence uh, delivery yeah. program. Yeah. But we do have uh, courses that are delivered via video conference uh, on a synchronous or an asynchronous basis with our other campuses. So about 20% of our courses here in Adelaide are delivered out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Right. So our students uh, interact with, with uh, students in, in, in the clashes in, in, in Pittsburgh, as well as in Silicon Valley, where we also have another campus. Gosh, it's, a, it's an amazing insight into the uh, university. Now, Carnegie Mellon, just uh, remind us, you've got, uh, what, you said about 100 students at the moment? Uh, uh, about 150 at the moment. 150. And where are they from then? Because if this is the Asian hub of Carnegie Mellon, they would be from, from all over the region? Yes, so we, our students come from over 30 countries. Uh, the, the vast majority are, are from Asia. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why we thought of the Downer and Rand scholarships was because uh, ha- few of our students are from Australia. Right. So this is a way of getting some Australians in there. Yes. So one of the re- prerequisites is, is that you are an Australian citizen yes. and you are eligible for these. And I'll remind uh, people again if they are interested in it. And you could have graduated a few years ago. You don't have to be a recent graduate. It could be a mature age person even, could it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, we've had uh, students who are in the late 30s and early early 40s deciding to take postgraduate training. Fantastic. All right. Well, it's been wonderful to meet you this morning, Professor Emil Bolongata. Uh, the, the scholarships are available. I imagine you've got an online uh, application, but is it best to ring and contact you directly? What's the best way to go about finding out about the scholarships? Our scholarship information is available in our website, but right. I would be very happy to answer any uh, calls uh, 
uh, about the scholarship from anyone. All right. And ju- just very quickly before you leave us, we're going to be talking in a moment about uh, Education Adelaide, that idea that South Australia is going to be this uh, hub of international education. Uh, ha- what, what's the reaction of your students? And do you think we could do more of what you're doing here in Adelaide? I think certainly. Uh, I think uh, Adelaide has uh, enormous potential to make itself a an education hub. The uh, the appeal of Adelaide is tremendous, not just as a as a in terms of quality of life, but in terms of uh, its environment. Uh, the one of the reasons many international students, at least those that come to our portals, are happy about is because this is a great place to study and live. And, and play. And did they know about it before they came to Adelaide? I mean, is it? I mean, if Carnegie Mellon, I mean, did they say when they talk to you? Did they say, oh, by the way, what's the city like when they were a student, or did they actually know about it before? They are. They have some awareness of it, but uh, not much. Not much. Not and, much. But when they come here, they they're generally. Uh, their expectations are exceeded, if I may put it that oh, way. Oh, that's the best way to be, isn't it? So surprise people with how wonderful Adelaide is. And I'm glad you're enjoying your time here. I am, I am, Ian, tremendously. Thank, tremendously. You, very, thank you very much. Thank Professor, you for having me. Professor Emil Bolongator there uh, from Carnegie Mellon.